Hi folks, the Filipina P here. And many of you guys are coming to the Philippines for the purpose of finding a mate. You've watched my videos. And you know you're probably gonna get a lot of female attention from the moment you step off the plane. You also know that if you start chatting with a woman, she might be telling you she loves you before you even make it out of the airport. You know you don't need any language other than English. And you don't need any special game in order to be dating a dozen different Filipinas by the time you get over your jet lag. But what you don't know is that most of the women I just mentioned are easy to date because they have an agenda. I'm not saying they're scammers. I'm just saying that many of them are determined to date a foreigner and snatch them up as fast as they can. But some of you guys are interested in a more conservative, traditional woman. Not one that's waiting for you online or looking to bump into you at the mall on your first day here. But catching one of those ladies can sometimes require a slightly different approach. And if you really want to impress her and blow her mind by understanding her traditions and dating culture, then you might want to take the time to learn a few phrases that will let a provincial woman know you're serious about courting her. Get ready to learn the secrets of how to approach a provincial Filipina. Ninety percent of the time, your standard Western dating tactics will work just fine here. Most of us Filipinas expect you guys to be a little more bold and aggressive than the local men. But to get a quality woman from deep in the province, it might be helpful to understand the way we Filipinos do things and learn how we show attraction to each other the traditional way. Walking up to a woman and saying, hey baby, let's go out, might not get the instant approval you were hoping for. Many women here actually prefer a reserved man who takes things a little more slowly and knows how to go about catching her attention. So let's start there. You're walking through a park, and you see a woman you want to get to know, but how do you approach her? Walking up to her and saying, Hi, what's your name? seems like a harmless way to open a conversation. But phrasing is important here, and a traditional woman might see that as being a bit too bold. A local man would say, Pwede bang malaman ang pangalan mo? Which means, May I know your name? I'm going to repeat these phrases slowly and clearly so that you can try to get the pronunciation down. Because as with all foreign languages, it's easy to think you're speaking our love language when you actually just ask to do something unspeakable to her mom. So this phrase is pronounced, Pwede bang malaman ang pangalan mo? And although it sounds a lot like, what's your name? There's a subtle difference that makes all the difference. You're not asking her to give you her name. You're asking if it's okay with her if you were to know her name. One way of asking requires that she provide her name on the spot. But what if she doesn't want to? Or what if she's already married? We don't like to be put in a position of having to say no. So the Filipino way of asking allows her to gracefully decline, probably by putting her hands over her mouth and backing away. It probably all just sounds like word games to you, but to us, there's a proper way to go about it that lets a woman know you're not pressuring her. If she's interested, she'll give you her first name and probably ask you for yours as well as where you're from. After exchanging pleasantries and getting the feeling that things are going well, you might be tempted to jump right in and ask her for a date. Now that might work some of the time, depending on the woman, but if you do that, she might assume that you're just looking for a quick companionship. And in her mind, you're probably walking around the park asking lots of Filipinas for dates. So don't be surprised if she either declines your invitation or says something like, maybe next time. Since you don't really know anything about this woman, there's no way to tell what she means. Is she just brushing you off or is there real interest there? Does she actually expect you to come back tomorrow and wander around the park in hopes of finding her again? Or is she trying to tell you she doesn't want to go out with you? The answer is, it could be either one. But you may never find out because you jumped the gun and pushed things too fast. 
But her reluctance to say yes to a date was probably because of something you weren't considering, that she needs time to ask her parents. Yep, even if the woman appears way too old to need permission from her mom and dad, that's often what a provincial woman will try to do. Buy time to inform her parents that she's met a man she's interested in. Until she discusses it with them, she's not going to say yes to you. So instead of asking her out, what you should have done was ask for her number like this. Pwede ko bang makuha ang cellphone number mo? Pwede ko bang makuha ang cellphone number mo? Which means, would it be alright for me to have your phone number? Now, of course, you can just say these phrases in English, but if you actually take the time to learn them in Filipino, you'll win a huge amount of bonus points that will impress the woman you're speaking to more than anything else you could do. We love it when foreigners speak our language. And even if these are the only things you can say, they're the right things to say. And they'll let her know that you respect her culture and traditions. And I guarantee you'll make her smile from ear to ear. They'll also impress the heck out of her parents, who are going to hear all about this mysterious man from a faraway land that somehow knows how to properly court their daughter. So once you've exchanged numbers, take a day or two to get to know each other through text. If she doesn't want a video chat, it may mean she's not comfortable communicating real-time in English, and she needs a moment to collect her thoughts and translate what she wants to say. Some Filipinas feel like they're being put under a spotlight when they're asked to video chat in a foreign language, so texting gives them a buffer for added confidence. Either way, keep the conversations pretty light, and whatever you do, don't mention anything about R-rated pics or adult chat. Don't even joke about it, because she's gonna be waiting to see if that's what this is all about. And until you get to know each other, humor is one of the ways we can have misunderstandings. Because Filipinos often can't tell when you're kidding, so it's better to just avoid the topic completely. I know I don't have to tell you guys that, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. So now you've been chatting for a while, and neither one of you are seeing any red flags. It feels like now's the time to bring up the subject of a date. But where should you take her? To an upscale restaurant? To walk around the mall? But once again, you don't want to commit a faux pas at this critical juncture. So take all those ideas about Western dating and throw them out the window. If you want to impress a traditional Filipina, you should say this. Pwede ba kitang bisitahin sa tahanan nyo? Pwede ba kitang bisitahin sa tahanan nyo? Which means, may I visit you at your home? In the West, that might seem like a very presumptuous thing to ask, since a woman will usually prefer to meet in a safe public spot. And you'd probably get a funny look if you ask a woman back to her place before you even had a date. But here, it's a sign of respect. Because what you're actually offering to do is to meet her parents. It's expected that a Filipina's family needs to meet you first to approve of you and your intentions before you spend time alone. So the first date won't actually be a date. It's gonna be an uncomfortable multi-hour affair that'll feel more like an interrogation at the local police department. You will be the one in the spotlight. So you may as well just pull a chair into the center of the room and tie yourself to it so the verbal beating can begin. There will be no holding hands and no kissing on this night, but there will be a lot of questions about your marital history and your ability to provide for their daughter. Assuming you survived the evening and still wish to continue, following this next step will let you know exactly what her parents think about your future together and like it or not, it's her parents you have to convince. Because a traditional Filipina won't take a poop in the woods without parental consent. So if you're feeling brave, find her father and say, Pwede ko po bang imbitahin mamasyal ang anak ninyo? Pwede ko po bang imbitahin mamasyal ang anak ninyo? Which translates to, May I take your daughter's sightseeing?
Now, this might sound like a very strange request, but when you're asking to date for the first time alone, it's traditionally a daytime date that involves something like the park or maybe the zoo, which is what we call sightseeing, and it usually includes a meal afterwards. By going directly to the dad for permission, you're not only showing respect. But you're assuring him that you're not intending to take her out for a night of drinking at a disco, and since the date will be during daylight hours, there's no need to discuss a curfew yet. It might seem odd not to be asking the woman herself, but your presence at her house in the first place indicates that her answer would be yes. And if her dad responds positively, you've got the green light to begin. Now let's assume that your sightseeing is going well. And you want to let her know that you're developing a further interest in her. Sometime during the date, it would be appropriate to say "gusto kita," "gusto kita," which literally just means "I like you." And although it seems like a rather innocuous thing to say, she'll understand exactly what you mean, and chances are, she'll be flattered. After this first encounter. You might decide that you wanna enter the next phase of a relationship by saying, "Pwede bang manligaw?" "Pwede bang manligaw?" Which means, "May I court you?" Now you might not know exactly what we mean when we talk about courting, so let me explain what the term implies to a traditional Filipina. Courting is a getting to know you period that has marriage as its end goal. It includes holding hands and kissing, which should not be done in public or in front of the family, and spending time together, including time with her family. But it's not an exclusive contract. It just means that two people are interested in each other and agree to continue dating to see what might develop. It's during this phase that Filipino men might serenade a woman outside her window or chop firewood and fetch buckets of water for her family. As a foreigner, you won't be expected to do this ritual, which is called harana. But I can promise you that if you did, you'd be a legend in her village for generations. It sounds kind of serious and official, but it's not. In fact, courtship doesn't even mean that you're boyfriend and girlfriend yet. In the West, the term girlfriend can apply after just a few dates, and it doesn't necessarily imply marriage. But here, it's taken more seriously, and it's one step shy of an engagement. So after a period of courtship that can last from a few weeks to a few months, you can make things exclusive by asking, "Pwede ba kitang maging nobya?" "Pwede ba kitang maging nobya?" Which means, "Will you be my girlfriend?" If she agrees. You've just become an official couple that's only interested in seeing each other. The future is yours to enjoy, and you can now take things at whatever pace suits you. But what about those magic words of love that are sure to melt her heart? Well, you probably know the basic phrase, "Mahal kita," I love you. But what about something with a little more impact, something she'll remember forever? Well, I've come up with a few things you can say when the time is right that will leave her speechless. Try some of these. Hindi ko alam kung ano ang tunay na pag-ibig hanggang makilala kita. Kapag nasa kwarto ka, wala nang ibang mahalaga. Ang tunog ng iyong pangalan ay nagpapalundag sa aking puso. Ang iyong buhok ay apoy ng taglamin. Mga baga ng inero, nagaalap din ang aking puso doon. Okay, so the last one's from the movie It, but if it worked for Ben, it can work for you too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode and not only learned a few handy phrases, but got an inside look at the dating culture of traditional Filipinas. We might require a little extra work. But the reward is immeasurable. See you in just a few days, folks. Oh, ilaw, sa gabing
Bob, is that you? Dude, I told you I'll see you tomorrow. Netflix and chill, remember? Okay, well, I know it's tomorrow already, but it's 3 a.m. And what are those buckets of water doing all over the yard? Just, just go home, okay? I'll talk to you later. And watch out for that pile of wood that the other guy left. I'm never gonna say I'm a provincial girl again. I need my beauty sleep. If you think about it, I'm kind of like a doctor with my finger on the pulse of the Philippines. I can help to vaccinate you against all the problems you may encounter when visiting here with an injection of information and humor. If you appreciate my services, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell for your next dose of Dr. P. Consider becoming a patron where you'll not only help to support my channel, but you'll receive exclusive videos and features. And while you're in the waiting room, you might want to check out this other material. It's much better than some outdated magazines. And I promise, this won't hurt a bit.